everybody, Nerd Team 101 here, and today we are going to be talking about the confirmation from Studio Wit that this is their last season of Attack on Titan. However, I just wanted to let you know that I have started a Patreon, and if you would like to support the content I produce, then please go check me out on there. Link in the description. That is www.patreon.com. Glass Nerd King 101. Recently, people in the anime community, especially some pretty big YouTubers, have been engaging in a conversation about classic anime dying out. And while that is not what this video is about, but will be a future video topic, I do want to talk about Attack on Titan and its state as a classic. First of all, a classic does not necessarily need to be a good show. Akira Toriyama Dragon Ball is considered a classic that defied an entire genre of storytelling. However, I would not call Akira Toriyama's Dragon Ball a very good story. Goku is a passable character, but he's no Naruto or Luffy. Just like Eren is a passable character, but he's no Simone the Digger. Where does Attack on Titan stand among your Dragon Ball Z's, and your Sailor Moon's, and your Gurren Lagans, and your Code Geass's? Well, at the moment, I would say nowhere. I don't think Attack on Titan is at the level of being called a classic yet, but I do think it, along with a few other shows that have been released in the past few years, such as My Hero Academia and One Punch Man could end up going down that road of being much watched classics for people getting into the industry in a few years. As discussed by Giduck in his incredible video on classic anime, it is noted that before the dawn of online streaming services for anime, the anime community was smaller and there was a general consensus on what shows would be considered a classic. Cowboy Bebop, Gurren Lagann, Tokyo, Evangelion, Dragon Ball Z, Stellar Moon, and so on were the few shows you just had to watch if you wanted to understand the industry and see the best of what it had to offer in terms of classical content. If we are being honest, some of these shows aren't very good, but every single one of them does deserve the title of classic due to the different things they brought to the table. Sailor Moon basically inventing the magical girl genre, Dragon Ball basically inventing the shonen battle genre, and of course Evangelion redefining anime forever. The point is, I don't think Attack on Titan is there yet. I don't think Attack on Titan is what you could call a classic, but I do think in a few years it could get there. I could definitely see the likes of My Hero Academia, One Punch Man, Season 1, and Attack on Titan reaching that level in a few years where there are shows that everybody recommends to new fans of anime. But while Attack on Titan isn't what I would call a classic yet, I don't think that affects how horrible and sad this news is. First of all, for people that don't know, I think it's important to note that I actually haven't watched Attack on Titan since Season 1. I tried to get back into it when Season 2 started, but I just couldn't do it. I had stopped caring in the gap between Season 1 and Season 2. But Attack on Titan is a really good looking show, so I do keep up with some of the Sakuga and the information behind that Sakuga just for the sake of it. And I'm also not going to deny the incredible popularity of Attack on Titan. I talked about it before, but there hadn't really been anything like Attack on Titan before in the anime community when Season 1 came out in 2012. The amount of attention Attack on Titan got from the anime community, as well as pop culture and fandom in general was insane, and it really at a level I don't think has been replicated since, but My Hero Academia has come close, but not close enough to truly replicate what Attack on Titan has pulled off. Attack on Titan itself wasn't even able to really replicate what it pulled off in 2012 when it returned for its second season. Attack on Titan is a beautiful show. And when you look at it, you would really have not assume that the show had any production issues. You really wouldn't assume there was a hard show to make because you think they have such a good handle on what they're doing. Well, that is just not the case. Most episodes of Attack on Titan had 30 plus key animators and 10 or more animation supervisors per episode. The difficulty with scheduling a series like that with that many animators in two very important positions in every episode is unbelievable. It's worth noting that most series only have one or two animation supervisors. 
This many is not normal. So yes, while the show did turn out looking really good, there was a problem with scheduling being incredibly taxing, as well as the fact that they normally have minor mistakes that they would have to correct in the Blu-ray or DVD release. What most theories don't get to do, the only reason they had that opportunity was because it was so popular. They also released the film this year in Kabanara of the Iron Fortress, I believe it is pronounced, that I hear is exceptional and from what I have seen is a beautiful and stunning looking film. They are also said to be working on two other series for television as well, two other full anime series, and they've been putting up with this incredibly casting joke since before 2012, and they probably started production on that first episode well before it was released. So they've probably been doing this consistently since 2011. It's honestly more surprising to me that they haven't given up on this project already and allowed somebody else to work on it. Now a lot of people when they hear that are probably immediately thinking of One Punch Man. And yes, that is basically what happened. A studio made a really good looking season one and then decided it was too much work and gave it to somebody else. Of course, there is way more story there and it's not it's nearly that simple, but that's not what this video is about. If you would like me to talk about One Punch Man and season one and season two and what happened there, I can, just let me know in the comments. However, the important thing to note in this situation is that that is a very different situation since the studios are not the right holders. The studios that animate these series do not hold the rights to them. The decision on what happened to Attack on Titan next will actually be left up to the manga publisher, Kodasha. One Punch Man is a Shonen Jump title that is handled by Shonen Jump and Suisha, so that is a very different circumstance and a completely different conversation because we're talking about two completely different companies. Now, the biggest question that we have to ask is, what is the best and worst thing that could happen now? Why don't we start off with the best outcome? The best outcome is that regardless of what studio Attack on Titan goes to after this, and if one decided relatively quickly, so the theory can maintain the hype between the end of season 3 and season 4, but that also people like the character designer and the director do go over to the new studio and move with the theory. If they can keep the core team that makes this series together, then there is a chance that this cannot turn out too badly and not be a very jarring transition that dooms the theory. One of the things that really messed up One Punch Man Season 2 is that we did lose the team. One of the things that's very important to note when talking about animation is that it is not about budget. Budget doesn't factor in too much into the quality of the animation. Yes, the budget does play a role. Obviously, better pay for employees probably leads to happier employees, which will probably lead to them caring about their work and enjoying it more. However, as Dragon Ball Super most certainly proved, a bigger problem than anything can be a bad schedule. If you walked up to some of the best animators in the world and gave them two trillion dollars and told them to make an episode of a show in a week, it probably still wouldn't look very good. So the best case scenario really is that the team moves with the show to whatever new studio we are getting, including the character designer, the series director, and that the series has a really good production schedule. The worst case scenario is actually the opposite of that, where we lose the entire team, and if not the entire team, all the people that matter and only really keep a couple small key animators. And then the new season is announced to have 55 episodes, and it's announced to be coming out less than a year after the new studio gets the series, meaning it has a terrible production schedule. However, at the end of the day, what matters is what studio does Kodasha choose to give Attack on Titan 2, because what that studio is will likely play a role in whether or not the team is going to go with the series. There's also the question of how many people on that team want to go with the series, and how many of them want to go off and do other things. Some of them have been on this series consistently since season 1 in 2012. None of this is set in stone yet, but I understand why this worries people that are fans of the series, and overall just fans of this industry in general. As I said earlier, Attack on Titan, whether you like it or not, is on its way to becoming a classic. And it's very close to being there. There are other shows that came out around the same time that I would say already have the 
title of classic, like, uh, Story Art Online. That sentence caused me far more physical pain than it should have. I think I'm going to have a heart attack. But if, if Story Art Online is, well, proof of, well, anything, is that you don't need to be good to be called a classic, right? And after seeing what happened to One Punch Man, it is concerning to see a theory that is this important to the community as a whole and its growth has the possibility of turning out like that. However, I have no idea if that will happen. Everything, as I said earlier, is now in the hands of Kodasha, and we'll have to see where they go from here. Their decision as to what to do with Attack on Titan can have three outcomes. It can save the series, it can make it even more popular than it was before, or it can kill it so, so badly that all you need to do is watch the opening on Twitter during your lunch break at work to decide you're not going to watch it like One Punch Man Season 2 did. I think this is going to be really interesting to see how this plays out because we've never seen a long-running show that has been with one studio this long change to another studio before. At least not a long-running show that is as popular as Attack on Titan. This would be like Studio Paradox coming out and saying we're not making Naruto anymore, it's too much work. And yet, this did happen with Hunter x Hunter. Hunter x Hunter did quit chance. But I don't really count that because nothing else was made for Hunter x Hunter until like 20 years later where they made the 2011 anime. Because unfortunately for Hunter x Hunter fans, because I hear the series is really good, I haven't tried it in a few years. Um, the author really likes Dragon Quest and he keeps taking hiatus so he can play more Dragon Quest. And I don't think I would really count a weekly Shonen Jump title that publishes less chapters than a monthly Jump title as a long-running anime. I just don't think that's fair to call Hunter x Hunter that. I mean, it technically is, but I mean, really? So if you don't include Hunter x Hunter, we haven't really seen any other series like this in this kind of situation that is as long-running as Attack on Titan. So it will be interesting to see how a long-running series like Attack on Titan is affected by this studio change. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and remember, if you would like to support the content that I produce here on this channel, make sure to check out my Patreon, which is linked in the description box down below, and can be found at www.patreon.com slash nerdking101. All the money that goes toward the Patreon goes toward allowing me to make more video for you guys and funding props and things needed for videos. And above all else, guys, the most important thing is that you have a nice day.